doesn't buy you the long-term influence by which alone humankind advances. And that is governed entirely by those who generate ideas. And that is something which people who simply want power for themselves are very seldom capable of doing. And so in the end, I'm not frightened that we have communism, if you like, re-emerging from behind the Berlin Wall and now spreading into every aspect of every Western democracy's life. Because, of course, that's what's happening. The, the, the um, extreme left, when they burst into tears as they saw their cherished Berlin Wall coming down and they realized that freedom was going to spread into Eastern Europe, whether they liked it or not, and my goodness, they did not like it. They're the people of Eastern Europe. The control-free like kingdom but was in trouble. Like, they moved in to the Green Movement and took it over. I have a friend, Eric Ellington, who was one of the founders of Greenpeace. And he said, within a year or two, I had to leave, and so many of us did who had founded it, because it had become taken over by Marxist entryists who had seen the Green Environmental Movement as a way of destroying the economies of the West from within by fooling us to shut our own economies down. And he said that to me many years ago. He said, I had to give up and come out. And that was long before they became as nakedly obvious. Yes, and yes. we should point out what you've been now. fighting. You've been fighting these people for 15 years, haven't you? I've been fighting them ever since I first worked for Margaret Thatcher because they were at that time in the Kremlin. We, they, they were buying our miners' unions support for a strike against the elected government of Britain. And they had spent £20 million, which in today's money is about $200 million, subsidizing the Marxist faction within our mine workers' union well, to what? try to disrupt Britain by a series of, of, of crippling strikes. So you learned and about them then. We're almost out of time. I'm sorry for interrupting. But now Russia's coming out against... Uh, the global warming tax. It's almost like things are upside down. We're the USSR, and they're not perfect, but, or what's your take on Russia? Well, they are now 20 times more democratic than the European Union is. Of course, you tend to vote at the point of a gun. You tend to have only a limited choice of candidates and a lot of corruption. But their elected parliament, insofar as it is elected, makes the laws for Russia. Our elected parliament no longer makes the laws for us. That's done for us by the commissars, whom we don't elect. So Russia is now more democratic than Britain. I hate to say it, but America is more democratic than almost anywhere else in the world. And I beg you, Alex, I beg you, do not allow America to give up her democracy for this mess of socialist global warming porridge and pottage at Copenhagen. Don't allow your freedom to be taken away. Lord Moncton, um, I know it is a Friday evening where you are, and I'd like to say bye to you here during the break if you must leave. If not, we have five-minute little short segment coming up. If we can have five more minutes, I'd like to come back, give you the floor with a final statement, or you can do it in the minute we have right now, about uh, seizing on these emails, which is now happening, and, and, and really... Uh, standing up for this battle and making sure that we get back on the offense instead of the defense, uh, because as you've said, uh, this is two minutes to midnight. It is. It's, it's, it's even later than that. I mean, we're really in the last second before freedom dies. And you must, you must, you must not let it happen. If you're listening to this, you may think, you may think, who is this lunatic peer? What does he know about anything? Isn't he just some kind of right-wing extremist nutter? After all, he worked for Margaret Thatcher. We all know what she was like. Well, she was wonderful, and she understood how ordinary people thought and lived and wanted to control their own affairs. And that's what I'm about, too. I think that freedom and democracy and prosperity are very, very, very precious rights yes. that we have been able to look at as rights, but they're not rights. They have to be fought for by each new generation. Stay there, sir. Stay there. All right, uh, it is, of course, uh, 8 o'clock in the evening over in England. He's waiting to have uh, dinner with his uh, lovely wife. So we're going to keep Lord Moncton another four and a half minutes. His website is scienceandpublicpolicy.org. Our websites are, of course, infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. And I cover the global green takeover in my film, Fall of the Republic, free on YouTube and Google. Millions and millions of views in this and the Obama deception. Show it to everyone you know. Just because you are awake and aware doesn't mean your friends and family are. And people are now ready to hear the truth. In the last four minutes that we have left, sir, you have the floor recapping Climate Gate, where we go, Copenhagen, the nature of these people, Lord Christopher Moncton. Science, very good.
very briefly. We now know by direct measurement that these consensus computer models, all of which had been tuned deliberately, as we now know from the East Anglia one, to show and save uh, and, and demonstrate the same results. These models are all wrong. The outgoing radiation that was supposed to be trapped by the greenhouse gases down here, so it wasn't getting out to space, is getting out to space. We've measured it from a satellite for 20 years. It's getting out to space just as much as it always did. And so the warming effect of extra CO2 is tiny. You're looking at maybe a quarter to half a Celsius degree over the whole of the next hundred years. That's the science, and that's by measurement. That's not a question of consensus. It's a straightforward measurement, and the consensus has been proven wrong in a paper published by Professor Lindzen just a couple of months ago. We also now know that even if there were a problem, nothing we can do about it, because we're only emitting enough to put up the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere by two parts per million of the whole atmosphere every year. That's enough to cause, even on the UN's exaggerated estimate of, of CO2's warming effect, that would only cause less than one twenty-fifth of a Fahrenheit degree of warming per year. So all those people who say we've got to save the planet immediately or we're doomed in 10 years, it's rubbish. Even if the UN were right, which we now know by measurement it isn't, there's nothing we can do about it short of closing down the entire world economy permanently. And so there's no point in taking any steps whatsoever to mitigate CO2. It's far better to adapt to any change in climate, whichever way it goes, and it's going to be 50-50 whether it gets warmer or cooler from now on, even if we do nothing. And the correct policy to deal with the non-problem, that is climate change, is to have the courage to do nothing except to prosecute and indict and imprison for a very long time the fraudsters and racketeers from Al Gore to the people at the University of East Anglia who have been making their fortunes at the expense of taxpayers and the little guy paying extra for his electricity to pay for all these useless windmills. We, the people, have now got to rise up worldwide, found a party which stands in every country for freedom, and make sure that we fight this bureaucratic, communistic, world government monster to a standstill. They shall not pass. Lord Christopher Monckton, in the minute and a half we have left, it is a godsend, your work for the last 20 years fighting these people. It's a godsend what Ron Paul's been doing. So many others are now speaking out against this tyranny. And we're now seeing that we can have victories against these people if we stand up. But this is the key juncture with Copenhagen. We must do everything we can, calling into local talk shows, letters to the editor, calling Congress, supporting you uh, when you go to Copenhagen. Uh, because if we defeat them on this, does this not deal a substantive, perhaps even death blow to this global government tyranny? I think what we're going to have to do is to close down the United Nations. I was talking to a very senior former UN ambassador the other day in Canada, and he said to me, and I was quite surprised coming from him, he said, I no longer, no longer see any purpose in the UN. It exists only to enrich itself at the expense of the nations it claims to serve. It's time it was brought to an end. We would all save billions if we shut down the UN and just about all of its hideous bureaucracy. And it's a it criminal no good. it's a criminal menace. It must be dealt with. I agree. Abolish it. Arrest the criminals. Charge them. Lord Christopher Monckton, thank you so much. Science of Public Policy dot org. God bless you. Godspeed. We salute you. And God bless America. Take care, my friend. Amazing interview.